fair warning, this video will probably make you really want cookies, as in the thing that you can snack on versus a, a cookie pillow that's a pillow that you make really cool stuff on. Hello and welcome to Book Hoarding by Bianca. I'm Bianca, sometimes we talk about books, but today I am continuing my journey to introduce people to bobbin lace making. Today's journey is about making a lace pillow, aka a cookie pillow. Is this something you can buy? Yes. But the point of my series on one-on-one -on -one lace making things is basically using things that you have around your house to test the waters to see if you enjoy this crafty thing before you invest a lot of money in buying the real professional grade stuff. If you're like me, then you get very distracted by new crafts and um, that's kind of why I want to give you resources on making your own things to give it a try. Previously, I have already done a video on making a bolster pillow and you can check that out right here. I also have a bunch of resources in the description about getting started from setting up your, you know, bobbins to doing anything else that you might want to do in this space, learning the history, getting some background on the different kinds of lace. All of that is in the description. While you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm going to be making way more lace stuff as we go. I also have a bunch of bookish stuff, sewing things, and occasionally some sword content. So hope you're prepared for that. So this bolster pillow is something we already went over and it's a thing that you would be able to use to make a lengthy continuous line of lace and you could probably do a little bit of that on a cookie pillow but not to the same extent. A cookie pillow is just going to be a kind of flattish thing that you put lace on, little lace projects and patterns, and then you use to make your pattern off of. This is the first cookie pillow I'm making. So major disclaimer that um, I could have done this better. Why then, you're asking, probably, am I putting this video together? Because even if this video might eventually be called how not to make a cookie pillow, I still think there's a lot of basic stuff in here that hopefully will help you get an idea of household things you can use to make your own starter thing to make lace. Here's what you're gonna need to make a lace cookie pillow. I used a big piece of cardboard for the base of this. You're gonna need some felt or fleece or whatever you wanna call it. Um, if you have scrap wool or anything else kind of puffy, that's great. You're gonna want some polyfill, some foam, some stuff that is gonna be cool and take to, you know, having needles push in it a bunch. So, you know, you're not gonna want something like styrofoam because that's just gonna collapse. But you, you know, think outside the box. Do you have cork? Do you have EVA foam, other cool stuff like that? Give those a try. You're also gonna want some fashion fabric to go over it and you're gonna need a ton of hot glue. So basically you'll need fabric things, squishy things, squishy things that will take needles easily and, and not break immediately when it takes needles and hot glue, lots of hot glue. Did I mention the hot glue? I'm about to show you the process of me making this. And again, fair warning, I forgot to add the foam that I have to make this more sturdy and useful over a longer amount of time. I will probably eventually add that foam in here because I just basted the outside on. But for now, here's my DIY and I hope it's at least helpful getting you the concepts about how to get started on making your own lace pillow. All right, so if you watched my previous video, I had a big piece of cardboard to use for the base of my other thing and I'm continuing to use just a large piece of cardboard. I have a bunch of hot glue, so I gotta get hot glue ready. And then I've got some polyfill. Now I should have pretty much cut out a piece of foam or cork or something like wool, a lot of wool that was the circle shape to put on top of this polyfill before I put the felt on top of it. But here we are. So I suggest putting a sturdier level basically in there. But for now, this is what this is. I put some polyfill on there to kind of buff it out and I'll be adding, you'll see in a second, I'll stuff more in there. Um, but I use that as a basis to start wrapping the felt or I guess it's technically fleece around this. And then I found some clips cause I ran out of C44s and I'm just using these little fabric clips to bring this around and kind of give it a, a smooth of a kind of circular dome shape as possible. Again, if I had cut out a piece of cork or something sturdier like foam for the top of this this would be a different a little bit different I'd probably have to work this a little bit more 
But here we are. Um, you know, do whatever compels you. So I'm just adding more stuffing while I have it pinned so I can adjust as needed. Afterwards, I think that, like, you know, definitely having clips is helpful because if you do have other unconventional fillings, you can change up as needed. Um, but yeah, I'm just stuffing it more and evening it out a bit. And, uh, here we go. Alright, so I've got it in kind of a good shape. So I will just, uh, finish kind of massaging it down and then get my glue. And then I literally just worked my way around this, hot gluing as many um, places as I could. And I kind of did like every other, so I did like between the clips. And then as it was drying, when I made the full circle, I would do it where the clips were or where the space was. Um, it was a little bit of like waiting for the glue to get hot again, because I was using more than the capacity, I think, with my little tiny glue gun. So yeah, just taking these off. Um, it's in pretty good shape, evening it out a little bit. And um, then I'm adding a second layer of felt. It's hard to see right now, but I'm just pinning the top of it so it's kind of both sides are ten have tension to keep it together. And then I will be just clipping with these little sewing clips the rest of it. Uh, I Again, if this had been over, like if it had been two layers of felt and then right under it cork or like a bunch of wool or whatever I think it would have been sturdier um honestly like even like try out using memory foam like an old memory foam pillow or whatever you have see how that does this is all testing and seeing what works for you what works for your projects and materials you're gonna use if all else fails I will use this purely for like needle lace because I don't really need to shove pins in it but here we are so I'm doing the second layer much like I did the first layer I just clip it around, cut off the excess, and I'm gonna hot glue. Now, I didn't really use hot glue until I started doing cosplay stuff. And not like using hot glue for costumes, like for foam stuff and for this stuff. You can see me dancing and trying to shove more hot glue through my glue gun. My god. Anyway, so that's why my hot glue gun's very tiny and I'm just kind of like I don't know what I'm doing. You can totally piece part of this too, like, especially the bottom, because it doesn't really need to be smooth. I'd say for the top, you don't want to piece it, but for the bottom part, I just wanted it to not just be cardboard. Um, so I, I pieced the bottom and hot glued it with some fleece stuff so it would look nice and feel nice. That's what that is. Brownies did teach me how to use hot glue. That's where I got all my hot glue burns and knowledge. Brownies. And then I dropped out after we got cookies. Anyway, so I was dumb and forgot to film the final part after you do this, which is just putting the fashion fabric on. And literally, I just cut a square of fashion fabric and I basted it on with thread to this thing. That's it. So that's all you need to do to finish this. Thank you for joining me for another disastrous, chaotic day of crafting in my house. I'm going to be doing some little lace DIYs on here and I'll actually leave it like this for a while and show you how it goes without the foam so that you get an idea of like the struggle with and without foam. Could I have just re-recorded this whole thing or redone this whole project? Maybe, but you know what? Sometimes it's good to see that not everything's gonna be perfect. Not everything are you gonna like ace the first time you do it. Not every tutorial I do is going to be like A++, it's great, there's no room for improvement because, let's be real, every sewing project I have, I know the things I need to improve on, even when I'm finished. So if anything, let this be a lesson on failing and just making it work and doing what you need to, but also not letting that keep you from sharing your passion or your excitement for something because if we wait to be excited and share that excitement, just when we're 100% perfect and everything's great, what would we be doing? We're humans and we can be flawed and that's fine. And sometimes we can be flawed when we make a thing and we show people how to make it. I'm not a professional teacher, but I definitely want people to get into the crafts without the gatekeeping barriers of, you know, budgets and things like that. So that's why I'm making these tutorials. They're not gonna be perfect. They're not gonna be as amazing as the amazing teachers that I will definitely link in the description, but you know, they work and they're free. 
these tutorials are literally free for you to consume and criticize and take from it what you will. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that bell notification so you can see all the wild and wacky stuff that I apparently do incorrectly and correctly sometimes. Do stick around because I have not only more lace making stuff ahead, I've got more fun little crafty things, book content, and sometimes I do dabble in swords, so stick around for that. If you like what you saw and you want to support me, even though I am chaotic when I craft things and sometimes leave out whole directions, please don't forget to check out my coffee and my Patreon. Reminder that patrons at my Lizzie Bennett tier and above get a special shout at the end of all of my videos, like right now. Thank you for joining me and um, go get a cookie because I've been talking about cookie pillows this whole time and I just really want cookies now. If I made enough cookie pillows, would Scrap Monster become the cookie monster? <laughs>